For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Hey guys, I'm back and I'm here to show you how you can take a short existing fence like this and convert it into this. And in many cases, you'll be able to keep your existing post and runners. With today's inflation, you want to save money, of course, so you try to keep everything you have. In this manner, you will save money, time, and you'll have the best looking fence around. Let's get started. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi, and today we are going to cover extending the height of your fence with your existing post. Okay, this had a six foot fence right here. I didn't dig the post up. I made them stronger and taller. This one over here is 64 inches high. We're going to add a few inches to it. This one here is really short because I cut it down to show you that you can even add as much as two feet to this and still have strength. It's 46 inches high. I'm going to add 24 inches to it approximately and we're going to attach this to my seven foot fence. I added that length to this fence or the height to this fence years ago. To get my proper height I measured to the top of my other column where I want to be and I'm just measuring down from this. I had six and five eight. So I'll take a little square and we're going to measure from the post up. Twenty-five and three-quarters. I'm going to use my little Craig jig. I set it on the max depth because this is a 4 by 4 It really doesn't matter. So, I'm going to clamp this puppy down real quick. I'm going to hold through it. I like this little drill for a little small half inch. It works. It's got some power. It's a pretty good little drill. I've been testing them out for a while to see if I like it. Had it for about a year and I've been very happy with it. This is important. You want a nice straight cut. I use my circular saw to come across this and get a good straight cut. I finished it off with my spider blade. This right here has carbide teeth on it. It's real thick. So when I came across, it didn't flex and give me a crooked cut. I was able to follow that line really well with this. Also, you can cut cinder block with it. I'll have a video on it because that's a pretty darn cool blade made by spider. I put my pocket screws on the two sides. That way I can get to them easily and when we put the cap boards on there, we just cover it right up. I'm using my Craig bit, the same bit that you use for the countersink, but I'm not going to have to set all that up. I'm just going to do it in place. I'll put this hole here, but what I'm going to do is show you how it's done. I'll come in straight and then I'll walk it out on a steep angle. Now I can take my screws and run straight in there and lock it in place. And they'll countersink so when I wrap it, I won't have to worry about the screw head sticking out. Before you secure this, you want to make sure that it's plumb, which means up and down it is straight. So we put the level on it, push it to where it needs to go. I'll hold it in place with one hand and run my screws in. Put a little bit of a countersink hole in it. harder. 
We're going to trim the bottom of these boards. I have them slightly larger than my 4x4. I'm going to show you how we make the whole thing. And on another video right now, I just want to show you how we give it strength. This is 5 quarter deck board. So when I wrap it with this, it's going to be solid. I'm screwing this in. Let me tell you why. I don't want to, to have trouble when I go to take this apart. If I have to take it apart, all I have to do is unscrew these and I'll be able to get to these screws that are attached to my two bys. if I want to keep my post and just change the fence. You don't want to have this all shot in and you tear your, your column all up trying to get it apart. You want to have this to where it's nice and solid, but you can just unscrew it and take it off. So I'll add some screws couple of screws on there but we'll make it neat and you'll see what it comes out at the end. I'm using my little Ryobi gun for this. This is a DIY gun. Good price for this type of gun. 18 bolt Ryobi. You can get them at Home Depot or online. We're gonna shoot two inch nails in here and these nails are uh, galvanized. Make sure you have galvanized nails. Line it up on the two sides as best you can. Really should be having my goggles on. This video was to show you how to save money taking your existing posts and raising them up and whatever you can save, you save. You can come back and pressure wash your runners if you need to and clean them up and then restain them if it's good wood. On here I have to change my cap board and this is cedar. It was chewed up by some squirrels and then the weather got to it, so I'm going to change that. But you wouldn't believe the difference. I paid $9 a board for that several years back. Even up to a couple of years ago, it was like $10, $12, I think. Now, I bought a board, 12 foot long, and it was $48. So, you don't want to waste money right now with this inflation. It's crazy. This video was just showing you how to make the structure. If you want to see how to cap these, make the cap boards and all that, and trim it, I'll be happy to show that on another video. Just drop a comment below. I will see you guys on the next project. If you don't mind, please subscribe and hit like.